Welcome back to Just Blazor Program. Today, we're going to be discussing the Blazor adoption rate. It has been five years since Blazor has been given out to the public to use and to adopt, obviously. Now, I know that it is unreasonable to expect, you know, a complete adoption rate by the people who will use Blazor. Uh, in this case, .NET developers in the beginning, because it was obviously just brand new, it was still very buggy, and people typically don't adopt stuff very early. Yeah, typically, people are very cautious. However, it's been five years. So where is all the Blazor, uh, all the Blazor stuff, or all the Blazor websites? Where are all the Blazor, uh, you know, just uh, companies adopting it? What is going on? Why is Blazor not being adopted yet at a high enough rate? And, you know, is it time to jump ship? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I'm... So in order to discuss the Blazor adoption rate, we have to first see a little bit of the Blazor history, not the Blazor history, but the web application history um you know why certain web applications have dominated the scene where others have waned so before we get into that blazer as you can see according to this has been out for since 2018 five years and they updated this wiki with the blazer united stuff which is great so fantastic um let's and then blazer is part of asp.net core which is you know asp.net which came out in 2002 21 years ago however before this Something else was a miss, or not before this, but like the main dominating force when it comes to web application development for the longest time was something called Silverlight, Microsoft Silverlight, because according to to uh, this wiki, apparently it had a 64.2% market penetration in May 2011. So in 2011, Microsoft was the dominant web app, you know, house essentially, like the technology that you would use to create a um. Uh, a, we a website would probably be Silverlight or when you would be using to create a web application is going to be Silverlight back in the 2011s. However, something happened. So in interestingly enough, even though at the time where Microsoft uh, Silverlight was uh, dominating, it was announced in 2011 that it was going to die. And the reason why is because um, it, it couldn't support the newer browser standards. And also other browsers did not want to support Silverlight and basically any binary out there. So this unfortunately affected one of my beloved uh, uh, things that I used in the past, Adobe Flash. Uh, if you ever seen like all back in the way when, if you ever seen like a game on a browser, or you ever seen like a video, like a cartoon video, or whatever on the browser, that was usually made in Flash, which was another binary. And basically uh, the browser decided that they didn't want to support these binaries anymore. And so they, they're not, they didn't support so unfortunately, that meant that Silverlight, you couldn't use Silverlight anymore for the for the foreseeable future, and people had to get off and use other things. So during this time, um, what existed was, let's see, was with Web Forms and MBC. So I don't remember exactly what state MBC was in uh, during this period, but um, let's see, where was the the preview release was in 2016. For real? Oh, I thought this was older, but apparently not. So this was not even, so this was not part of the market, market at that time when Silverlight was dying and it was web forms instead. So, um, so that means that Microsoft has lost its biggest, uh, its biggest place in the market with Silverlight at that moment. And then that shifted everything. So in case you don't know what this time period was, if I were to, uh, let's go over to this guy who actually wrote a little bit about it and I will put this in the, uh, in the description. Basically the overall recap of what's happening here is that there was a standardization effect in the nine, uh, uh, between 96, 99, then in the two thousands, you know, that's, this is when JavaScript was really like coming into its own. Um, you know, some, this is when jQuery was around. So if you've used Razor, you probably use jQuery along with it and for good reason. And then a little bit later, this is when the Chrome browser comes in, takes over, basically the, starts taking over the market. And then in 2010s is when the JavaScript frameworks that we know today came out. So in 2010 is when basically the Microsoft, uh, hegemony of web applications really just started to die. And that is when all these other frameworks came out. Angular, React, these frameworks were made uh, during this time, uh, which, after 2010, more or less. 
but at the same time microsoft silverlight in this case was the market uh market dominant uh web application technology was starting to die because of the standardization of the browsers essentially so the browsers were no longer going to support it anymore and people had to move off of it so this caused a massive shift in the market from microsoft dominance to the js dominance that we see today and that is what severely impacted a lot of the potential that microsoft had in that web application space so now we had to go back to asp.net and we have the web forms and we have mvc so mvc started taking over and there was a shift in ASP and the people who their web forms and MVC are still being used today. There are still web form developers are still MVC developers. You know, if you use razor, then you're the MVC one. And if you use web forms, then you're obviously a web form developer, but, um, the, but there is a pattern and there is a push in the market to go from web forms to MVC at least, or to get out of web forms because web forms is being it's severely out of date. Let's just call it that. Like, uh, I, I don't knock it if you've done this for 20 years or whatever, or you've been doing it up to today and you're still making money. You know, you make your money. But, you know, the winds of change are showing that web forms are becoming a are a dying breed, essentially. And then the people who go from here will probably be going to NBC or have been moving into NBC over time. And then hopefully that also means that people that are from NBC Razor kind of space We'll move into blazer because that is the newest closest language that you're probably used to so that is the pattern that i see here when it comes to the adoption or how this adoption is going to go yeah you know we go from a very old uh framework to a, to you know the stable new one that it's not new but it's a stable one and then finally to the new one which today would be blazer and just in case to cover my bases with these other ones we got angular coming out in 2016 there's angular 2 Angular 1 came out in 2010, and then React is 2013. So in those 10 years, these uh, JavaScript libraries have taken over web development space, and it's unfeasible to believe that people who use these technologies will move into Blazor because why would you do that? Why, if you're used to using JavaScript um, and used to running these libraries, would you go into something that's completely different than you? It's different when it comes to us people who use MVC Razor because you kind of are forced to use some JavaScript in your code because Razor was unfortunately not good enough to do stuff on the web application by itself or on the browser by itself and needed JavaScript helped on it. So it's much easier to kind of move into the JavaScript space than to um, go the other way around. And um, there's less incentive to go from JavaScript to let's say ASP.NET Core um just as a matter just as a technical matter and according to microsoft i don't have these numbers here but according to them they say that they have about 5 million people who are net developers and unfortunately that is both you know it's really good and it's also a problem because that is the pool of people who are most likely to adopt blazer those are the pool of people who have the experience and I probably want to stick to that same language and have the interest in adopting something like Blazor if they're going to web app, web application. However, not everyone in the .NET space is a web app developer. You have things like, um, you know, WCF or WPF or something. And those people are not web app developers. Uh, they develop for the desktop. And then you have, uh, you know, Xamarin, which is also not a... Uh, a web application that's a mobile application there are people who do xamarin still um and uh so then you have that five million number of people being you know divided into whether or not you're a web application developer and then those people are going to be divided into the ones who are left i mean will be divided into asp.nbc and web forms uh, mostly and then it's these people will be the most likely to adopt Blazor. However, the other problem comes with company adoption. Now, companies usually stick to one uh, one technology until they absolutely need to, you know, go for the next one. So what we see in the adoption rates with Blazor are coming from companies who are willing uh, to move into this newer technology, who are willing to take risks for it, who are the innovators, quote unquote, of the uh, a web application development. And you can see it here. This is the Stack Overflow Trends chart, and I set this to React, Angular, Blazor, and Vue.js. Uh, React is blue, Angular is yellow, 
view is red and blazer is down here in the green. So this is essentially the number of uh, the questions that people ask and the, you know whatever tags they put on there that Stack Overflow has been aggregating since two, when, 2008, I think. Yeah, 2008. So Blazor obviously didn't come out to 2018. So they really didn't start to get any questions until after that. But there has been a giant market dominance for these other libraries, specifically React. React has been getting more and more popular over time. And Blazor is getting more popular. Like there is a positive trend here, but it's still, you know, a very small amount of the market share when it comes to these questions. When it comes to the interest level that people have when they want to use a technology, you know, they have a question, they put it on Stack Overflow. And that's a, you know, that's a gauge of, you know, how much engagement we have with the technology. Angular and Vue.js are both going down basically our downward hill and they're probably going to reach some sort of like stable uh, stabilization point. But there is a downward trend for both of them. Luckily for us, Blazor is in an upward trend, even though it's very, very small and React being the big winner out of this. So, yeah, so that's going to be the competition here. And I do think that part of the reason is because .NET developers are kind of divided when it comes to what kind of technologies they're using and for what reasons they're using it with. So the good news is that these people are probably experienced in C-sharp, which allows them to move into a web application development easier, but maybe they're not web app developers. And if they are, they're probably using other technologies to do it. And they're probably not going to move into Blazor just yet because, you know, uh, the company, whatever they're working for is probably not going to adopt a new technology if they've been using something more legacy or something that is stable for them. And, you know, they're not going to change out of that just because it's new. So we need to incentivize the adoption of Blazor. And that is unfortunately, um, I just have these other things. Um, and the, to incentivize Blazor is unfortunately something that um, can only be done both in time. And if Microsoft really devotes more time, more resources into outreach for, you know, Blazor adoption, that's another thing. And the reason why I'm, I brought up this is just to cover the adoption pattern. So I know this is like a very small microcosm, but this is someone basically asking for web form developers or uh, web form jobs or something. And then he gets an answer by saying, um, essentially to move from web forms to MVC. So to move from the older, from the oldest language between the three web form MVC and blazer from web forms to MVC. And then eventually this will probably repeat itself again and move from MVC razor to blazer. If we are able to get a lot of adoption because I'm pretty sure Microsoft is still looking at the numbers to see how much adoption rate there is before they decide to really go whole hog on it. Um, and I do think that is both, you know, it's smart, I guess, on their side, because, you know, they're saying if engaging um, where that's a good thing. But I also believe that they should be pushing it more to these people, because the people who would be the most benefited by it are the people who use MVC Razor. They are the ones who are the closest to a blazer adoption and they can easily adopt blazer in my experience since i also went from razor to blazer and it's not that hard um to go from one to the other there are some conventions that are different and there are some things you have to take into account especially when it comes to you know your hosting models and stuff but it's honestly really simple to go from one to the other and then you you kind of like understand how to do things intuitively because some things still remain the same however going from ac.net mvc to blazer is a matter of both time and a matter of both uh outreach of blazer the technology and unfortunately that is up to microsoft and the companies who who hire you to decide whether or not they want to move into that and that is really hard to convince so the only way that i could see blazer really like getting more and more market shares is either there's a push from microsoft or if newer projects that are that are built by .NET developers for web applications are built in Blazor. Because that's the only way I see Blazor adoption going up is because, you know, newer things that are coming out, newer ideas, newer web applications, those being built in Blazor becoming more proof of concept. In fact, that's something that we're missing in the Blazor community. Uh, if you ask, you know, give me a good React site, you get like a thousand of them, thousands of them. If you ask, well, oh, give me a good Blazor site that's, you know, that's useful or that's really big, it's hard to find, like, the only good ones I think I've found so far is like Mudblazer. Mudblazer is, not, is a Blazor site from what I could tell. And um, there's not really a good example for one. 
if you ask somebody, give me a good example of a Blazor site or a Blazor, you know, application that, you know, I could check out and see if it works, you know, if it looks good or whatever. Good luck finding one because there really isn't that many. So to convince people to use Blazor is a problem. And there's a lot of competition for Blazor, as you can see from the insight chart that I had here. To recap, the things about Blazor that are keeping the adoption rate kind of low is number one, it is still considered a new technology by companies who are using things like ASP.NET Forms and Razor. It's still not battle tested because if I asked the question, give me a good Blazor site, it's hard to find. I can't find a good one for you. I can't find a prominent one that I could use as an example. Whereas if I ask you for a React or Angular site, you would have like a thousands and thousands of them used by many companies all across the world. They are battle tested and, you know, and have a giant community behind them. Blazor is fairly new com in comparison. 10 years in technology time is like an infinite amount of time. And uh, Microsoft doesn't seem to be pushing Blazor very hard into, you know, having people adopt it. And I would say that it's, I, I don't think the strategy is going to work for them here because there's just so much competition. Uh, you can't really rest on your laurels this way. In fact, let me ask you a question just real quickly. How did you learn about Blazor when you were looking for what? Like, what were you specifically looking for when you found Blazor? Because I'm pretty sure that you were probably looking for something to do with Razor, maybe, or something to do with Webform, some interactive application thing. And then you stumbled upon Blazor. Like, I'm pretty sure it wasn't something that you uh, were you you were um exposed to uh you probably were exposed to it by accident more than anything and then you're like oh that's pretty cool this technology exists let me check it out and i think that's part of the issue as well and then obviously the fact that uh the community is kind of split when it comes to web application development in the microsoft space that's a problem and that i don't know how you're going to fix that that's just a matter of time really and a matter of how much microsoft wants to devote itself to blazer uh, to, to push it into it and then, of course, you know, we had the history. Microsoft lost its web application dominance back then. And it's it can't really regain it unless another shift in um, browsering uh, and how you develop stuff for working on the browser. And I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. So, yeah, that's these are the reasons why Blazor adoption rates are pretty low. So. It really is an investment for the future. I do think Blazor has a good future, even though this doesn't look like much. The fact of the matter is that um, despite all the competition, Blazor adoption is going up compared to, let's say, Angular and Vue.js. These people are probably moving into React, most likely, and that's why this is so high, which means that this is not really coming from this side here. It's really coming from .NET developers specifically. Um, going into blazer so that's a good thing which means that more people in the dotnet developer pie are going into blazer and if more if this trend continues and yes we'll see a higher adoption rate within the dotnet circles which is where i expect it to be so yeah i'll keep making blazer videos and you know use this knowledge to your advantage do you believe that blazer has a bright future with it do you think more people are going to be adopting it for the future um do you believe that it's just going to be a js future forever and that, you know, once MVC and web forms are so out of date that they're not worth learning into that, basically, you're going to have to go into React. Will Blazor make it? Who knows? I'm hoping it will, though. And I'll keep on, you know, uh, looking at these charts and, and seeing the trends continue. Hopefully, Blazor United will be the thing that we need in order for uh, Blazor to really take off because that because I get that issue, the web form issue, the web app, uh, the web assembly issue. I get it. And hopefully that Blizzard United stuff will fix it and we could finally see a better trend in our Blazor adoption rates. So with that in mind, I know this was a bit rambly, a bit ranty, but still, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you later.